years. What have you thought the, about the way he's looked physically in this bounce back season? So he's been great. Um, like nothing's ever happened, you know, and when you have a talent like that, you know, it's, it's, it's hard, you know, and, you know, with him being seven foot, be able to handle the basketball and shoot the mid range shot, shoot the three and shoot over his opponents. Um, it's tough, you know, cause his, his game wasn't predicated on athleticism, even though he had it, his, his, his uh, game was predicated on getting to his spots and rising up, taking his shots. And he hasn't missed, he hasn't missed a beat to me. Thanks, Shane. Uh, next question, we're going to go with Charlie Widows. Go ahead, Charlie. Hey, Coach. Uh, so far, you know, so much of the offensive success this year has been, you know, ball movement. Um, how important have Kawhi and PG's buy-in uh, been to, to the ball movement for the team? Um, it's been great. You know, we challenge these guys from day one um, with PG, Kawhi, and Lou. You know, we're going to put the ball in your hands, but you have to make your teammates better. And um, they've been doing a great job of that, um, buying into what we're trying to do. And um, it's been great. So, and when everyone's touching the basketball, we're penetrating, kicking, and making plays for one another. It's fun to play that way. Thanks, Charlie. Uh, next one, Ty, is going to come from Andrew Greif. Hey, Ty, uh, status update on, on Nick tonight. Will he go? Yes, sir. He's playing. Okay. Um, just in the last, you know, 11 games, and you guys have won 10, you guys have seemed like, seemingly kind of eliminated those easy baskets for all your opponents. I think their points off turnovers down. Uh, points in the painter down. Uh, I guess was that a specific focus of you after that? After I guess those first ten games or so to really limit uh, points after turnovers and just kind of those easy opportunities. And how do you feel like you've done so far? Yeah, um, a big emphasis was taking care of the basketball, Andrew. I think you know we don't turn the basketball over. You know we're so good offensively that when we're getting shots, you know it's hard for teams to get out in transition and score against us. Um, you know defensively we've been a lot better, so. That's enhanced our offense a lot because we've been better defensively in these last 11 games. So we've really talked about, you know, locking in defensively. Um, we made some changes. We made some lineup, you know, changes as far as when guys are playing and who's playing together. And um, since then, you know, we've been pretty good. So, you know, we got a lot of work ahead of us and we want to continue to keep building. But right now we're going in the right direction. And then it's been about a week, I guess, without Pat. Is there any kind of time frame where are you optimistic you'll get Pat back anytime soon? You know, I don't ask those questions. I just check on him every other day just to make sure he's okay. You know, check on his spirits, make sure he's doing good. But I don't, I don't ever really ask him when he's going to be back because sometimes you tend to get guys to rush back and they're not really, really, really ready. So, sure. um, you know, I just check on him and I don't really know a timetable right now. Thanks. Uh, next question from Kahari. Go ahead, Kahari. Uh, what's going on, Ty? Uh, when, this is your first year coaching and when uh, coaching the Clippers. When was it that moment for them that they that, that, that you realized that they bought in, and um, how easy for the coach that they that the team is buying in? Um, I think from day one. I think you know when we had our two a days and guys didn't complain. You know we talked about we want to put the work in, and um, you know we have a good team on paper, but until you put the work in, you're really not going to get out of it anything. So um, I think from day one we talked about we want to do two a days and seeing our guys healthy and. Just seeing Kawhi, PG, and Lou and those guys just buy into what we're trying to do offensively. Um, that started day one. You know, it's going to take some getting used to because we haven't played together. We haven't played in that system before. And, um, you know, guys are starting to get used to it and get more and more comfortable. And um, we, only, we only can get better. Thanks, Kahari. Uh, next question will come from Miriam. Go ahead, Miriam. Hey, Ty, good to see you. Um, yes. I, obviously, they, they've got some big players over there to, to plan for. Uh, but wondering when you're looking over at the tape and, and at that team, where Landry fits in and what you're seeing from him so far and, and what's like the game plan against him after last year? Um, I don't know. It's like Landry, sometimes he turns down some shots. Sometimes he takes them. Um, just, you know, fit into a new system, you know, is it, tough for him because he's used to running off screens and um, playing a different, you know, different way. So um, I think he'll be fine. You know, the way you shoot the basketball, the way he does, um, he's going to be okay. Just trying to find his niche and, you know, with a new team and new system, it's going to take some time. Thanks, Miriam. Uh, next question, Ty, is from Justin Russo. Hey, Coach, good to see you and hope you're doing well. Yes, I'm doing good. <laughs> <laughs> good. These are the top two half-court offenses in the NBA. And when you have a game like this that features this much firepower offensively, both individually and collectively, what are the challenges that are presented defensively as each team tries to shut the other one down? <laughs> it's tough. You know, I think, 
you know, you have a lot of really good players, but you have six bona fide scores with Kawhi, PG, and Lou, and, you know, Durant, Kyrie, and Harden. So um, it's going to be tough. I just think you got to take the one-on-one -on -one challenge and um, try to guard your man best you can one-on-one -on -one without help being there. Um, but it's going to be a tough game, you know. Um, well, these guys can score with the best of them. And um, so, I don't know, it's going to be – we just got to see once the game gets going and, you know, who we want to trap, who we want to blitz, who we want to double team, or if we have to or not. So, with that many guys over there to score the ball the way they can, um, it's kind of tough to choose which one you want to try to take out. Great. Uh, next one, Ty, uh, is from Malika. Go ahead, Malika. Hey, Ty, uh, two for you. First, I'm wondering what having Nick Batum, I missed that earlier, what, what does having him back uh, do to maybe alleviate some of the pressure from, from other guys that you have out on the floor? And then secondly, when you're talking about one of the more, uh, two of the more potent offensive teams, how much more does that make you think that this game is just going to end up coming back down to what happens on the defensive end? Um, well, it's good to have Nick back. You know, I think he's been doing a great job and, you know, especially defensively, I think being able to switch one through four, and sometimes one through five, um, gives us a chance to try to keep the ball in front of us um, without, you know, trying to kill some of their triggers. Uh, offensively, the way he shoots the basketball and his passing ability, you know, we play him a lot at the elbows, and he's usually the one that, you know, makes the passes to Kawhi when we run rip screens with our point guards and things like that. So just his passing ability, the way he's able to make shots, and defensively, I think, is, is biggest for us tonight, being able to switch and guard one through four. Um, as far as um, the second question, you know, I just think it's going to be a tough game. You know, I think, you know, with the offensive power they have and um, the way they score the basketball, we just got to take the challenge, like I said, one-on-one. -on -one. And, um, you know, the easier it is to guard your man, then it's easier for the help defense to be better as well. So um, we just got to take the challenge one-on-one -on -one and just kind of go from there. Uh, next question, uh, Ty, is from Ohm. I know Ohm misses a lot of things about being back east, but not the snow. Right, Ohm? <laughs> hey, Ty. Um, I was wondering, uh, you've been around so many superstars that you played with and you coach with some of the all-time greats. Um, when they would enter a game where they were facing other superstars like this game tonight, did you see anything in their persona or mentality entering that game? And have you seen anything from Kawhi and PG leading into this game? But just maybe this has a little more juice. Do I have to comment on that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, of course, you know, everybody says just another game, you know, which we, we want to get better, and continue to play the style of basketball that we want to play. Um, we really don't want to get caught up in the way they play because they have, you know, one-on-one -on -one great ISO players. So we don't want to turn it into that, to that kind of game. But whenever you, you know, the greats are playing against the greats, you always want to be great. And um, they can say it's just another game, but I know on the other side, you know, and I've played, and I've seen Kobe, and I've seen, you know, Tracy McGrady, I've seen Shaq, I've seen Jordan, those guys preparing for, you know, to play against another challenge on the other side of the basketball. So um, it's going to be fun to see. It's going to be fun to watch. And um, I'm pretty sure they're up for it. And is it going to be fun for you as a former point guard and Steve Nash, a former point guard, how much fun would it have been to, to just be, be on the floor with this many scorers around you guys? <laughs> it's been amazing. I've been right in the corner waiting on my shot. <laughs> <laughs> Got to write to my guys and go stand right in the corner and wait for them to double team and get my shot. Thanks, Ty. Yes, sir. Uh, Mark Medina, go ahead. Hey, Ty, good to see you. Um, an off-court topic here. I was wondering, what do you think it's going to take for there to be better uh, head coaching, front office, and ownership diversity in the league? What would you say? I was saying, what, what do you think it's going to take for there to be – better diversity within the head coaching ranks and front office and ownership? Oh, I'm not sure. I mean, if you had the answer, I wish you could share it with us. Um, but I, I'm not sure. You know, we just got to keep plugging away. And, um, you know, and we just got to see what happens. Uh, Brian Lewis, go ahead. Hey, Todd. Um, you talked about, you know, it's obvious that a game like this and going up against stars – you know, the other stars get a little amped up and there's a little extra or something. But I'm curious, have you noted uh, anything extra in Kenny coming home and facing this team? Uh, can you tell? No comment. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no comment. Uh, all right, we got time for two more. Farbod and then Law, you'll close this out. Go ahead, Farbod. Hey, Ty. Um, Steve Nash had just talked about 
you know, the, the level of trust the Clippers had with each other and the newfound understanding and resolve he's seen from last year to this year. I mean, how much pride do you take when it seemed like everyone's opinion last year is that there wasn't as much chemistry or they hadn't bought in or this or that. And now it's almost seems much more universally accepted within 20 games that there is this newfound level of resolve. Is there a certain level of pride you take as a coach when you hear other people like Steve Nash, who's a, you know, MVP player say something like that about your team? Yes, it means a lot, you know, and, you know, the credit is not to me, the credit is to you know, our coaching staff, or our players. I think, you know, with Lou, Kawhi, and PG, um, you know, we told those guys we're going to play through them. And with that being said, you know, a lot of responsibility comes because they got to make other players better. And they've really done that. And they've took the challenge to get into the paint and make the play for someone else or make the extra pass. And, you know, it's a fine line because, you know, our three scores were Lou, PG, and Kawhi. They're mid-range shooters. So when they get to their spot, they usually rise up and shoot the basketball. Um, but our coaching staff with Kenny and Roy and DC and, you know, Chauncey, LD, everybody's been, been on those guys about getting into the paint and making the extra pass off of threes. And they've been doing it. They've been getting their shot, and they've been making guys better. So, you know, we're only going to get better at it. Um, but right now they're doing a good job. Uh, and go ahead, Law, take us home, Law. Uh, going back to what you mentioned earlier about trying to stay disciplined, not to have this turn into one of those uh, you know, ISO one-on-one heavy kind of games where it's basically LA Fitness and Barclays Center. Like, how do you do that? Is that just a matter of calling timeouts at the right time, emphasizing that ball movement, like playing your pace when you're playing a team that likes to run at a high pace? Like, how, how is that going to be as far as managing this game appropriately? Just um, talking about ball movement, and I think just calling plays that, that forces us to move the basketball. Um, we're going to be in position because they switch a lot. But we're going to have a lot of mismatches, so we definitely want to take advantage of those mismatches. And we're going to play some one-on-one, and if they don't double, then we want to score. But usually when you get a mismatch, teams double and try to take it out of your hand, you get two on the basketball, and that's when our drive and kick and our passing really comes into play. So um, we're going to take advantage of mismatches. They're going to switch and put um, put the certain defenders on our guys, and um, if not, we're going to call plays where we continue to move the basketball and move bodies.